ended. What? Yeah. Oh my god. So not a second there, guys. And the um, OBS is going from yellow to red to yellow to red to yellow to red. <sighs> Gosh. I mean, I'm going to stop this stream and start. I'm going to just record this show. Okay, guys? You okay. Okay, we'll do that there. <clears throat> okay. All right. Your turn. Okay, my my turn. I think I mentioned the Ministry of Darkness here. Ministry of oh, Darkness. I, what again? Are we live still? No, no. I'm going to record the rest of the show and um, upload it on my channel there. That's so, yeah, all that we could do. And I don't know what the heck happened with the um, internet there. They said there was no internet connection. Oh, my God. But I have to do it like that there. <clears throat> I don't know what it was. said it was uh, streaming no data. Let me see if I can start it up again there. Blah, blah, blah. Give it a couple of minutes here. In the meantime... <laughs> We would talk about the Ministry of Darkness. Here was the Undertaker wearing this long black cloak, looking like a taller version of the Emperor. And his disciples, you know, um, Edge and Christian, you know, the um, Gangrel, and everybody else there, the uh, Acolytes, which was a later one would later become, you know, JBL, of course. You talking about the Brood? Yep. Well, yes, the Brood, the Acolytes with Ron Simmons and um, Bradshaw, JBL. Let's see if I could do this again here. Go live once more with no problems. All right. And of course, we got, um, I think it was, um, and b keep in mind, I, I remember this in the WWF magazine at that time. And I didn't agree with this at all here, but because you know when I I would never wear these three numbers uh, nowhere on the T-shirt, but there was a patch, Undertaker six six six, and that was on for sale on the WWE uh, shopping spot of the magazine there. Same thing with the House of Black and mm. they, they, they did the same thing. Really, <laughs> what with the uh, Mark of the Beast on there? Yeah, they trademark it. They, they oh, always wow. put them in shirts. It's always. I think Alistair Black has a tag too with that too. Really, I'm not too. I'm not too I heard about that one, but um, I'm sorry, but <clears throat> yeah, they, okay. they, they. This world is, you know, it's very, really, yep. you know. Mm -hmm. Living in the yeah. end days. That's all I can say about that, Doctor L. All right. Right. And I believe it's Prince's turn. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go with uh, a faction that Eddie Guerrero made, and that's LWO, which Mary Mysterio brought back recently with uh, yep. Santo Escobar, Selena Vega, Raheem Wild, and mm. Val Tasma. Yeah, Val Tasma is his name. Ah. And that was obviously uh, formed, uh, reformed to take on the Judgment Day faction, obviously, yeah. there. Yes. But Interesting like the, there. Like the from WCW. I like mm -hmm. the in fact, next, a lot, uh, in fact, let me, hold on, let me just plug that real quick. On our next, ex, on our next episode, we will be talking about the great luchador of wrestling. On our next episode, right after we're done talking about the greatest faction, we will be talking about Greatest Mexican hero wrestlers. Great, mm -hmm. the great luchadors. And I'm so excited for it. All so right. stay tuned to that, guys. Okay, I'm going to go back a little ways on this one. And this one formed in the, I believe, the 80s. Mm -hmm. And they were part of uh, Jerry Jarrett's Continental Wrestling Association. Uh -huh. uh, a little group known as the Freedom Fighters, ah. which consisted of a wrestler named Jim Helwig and another one uh -huh. named Steve Borden. And we know those guys, what they would later become. And basically, 
they came in as good guys and kind of turned into bad guys. Their names in this group were Justice and Flash. Mm, yeah. And I think and those two later became the Blade Runners just as well. Well, there. I was headed that way. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> uh, they became the Blade Runners. Helwig was Rock, not The mm-hmm. Rock, Rock. And mm-hmm. Borden was Sting, which uh-huh. he obviously kept. Yep. And they were managed by Hot Stuff Getty Gilbert, if you guys remember him. Yes, I do. I remember seeing him many times at the USWA. Definitely. And mm-hmm. uh, he and Forchi is no longer with us just as well there, sadly. Sting is, but hell, he's not. I know. I say he's gone as well. I mean, like, uh, I guess, you know, it was good. I guess it fits to say that it was good that he finally uh, got patched things up with Hulk Hogan and Vince McMahon because the way the way they both parted was not that good, if I understand. In fact, you know, I know Warrior had some issues with um, Hulk Hogan. There was this one hour-long promo he did on Hogan calling him out with just about everything, everything from being, you know, um, being a drug addict to a failing his kids, everything you just about name it. Yeah, he did it out. Just look up Warrior calls out Hulk Hogan, and you uh, fi- probably find that video. Definitely check it out if you can, guys. Okay. Yes. All right. <clears throat> okay. Okay. My next faction is features Michael P.S. Hayes. And the oh, late, boy. oh yeah, Terry Gordy and Buddy Roberts, who are both no longer with us. Of course, we know them as the fabulous Freebirds. I mean, uh, they would make way. They made waves in the uh, wrestling world on in the territory days. They even had a spot in the uh, NWA, taking on members of the Four Horsemen. And uh, they even, I remember Hayes was saying things, we're going to be up all night drinking whiskey, thinking about how we could take all you guys down. Yep, and they also had their own theme, opening theme music, and as well as a video, Bad Street USA, Bad Street Atlanta GA. Yeah, they originally come in with Freebird. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Skinner too. Yeah, and those were the most recognizable three but uh, there were other people that were part of it, most notably Jerry Gar- Jimmy Garvin. Yeah, who is the brother of Ronnie Garvin. You know, I guess so. They had a thing to, had to, they were the free birds for a while there, just those two there. And of course, the um, other two guys, Gory and Robert, say, nope, not so, man, not so. All three of us were the free birds, bottom line. Gordy, of course, was the enforcer, big guy. Mm-hmm, yep. And, um, of course, later on, when uh, he would later, uh, Michael PSAs would later join the WWF under the new name Doc Hendricks, and uh, they would get him to cut his hair. Of course, when his hair grew out a little bit long, he finally revealed his real name, Michael P.S. Hayes. And they're uh, like, wow, it makes sense now. Because math, because uh, P.S. Hayes had some massive blonde hair, that's for sure. That he did. Mm-hmm, yes. They had an absolutely fabulous feud with uh, Von Erichs in WCCW. Oh yeah, man, who cannot for forget years. those days? Yes, <clears throat> that's true. There. All right, so I believe it's now Prince's turn. I guess. Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. All right. A, another great faction that had the Nature Boy in it, and so so sad to say they're kind of still around, and that's Evolution with Triple H, mm-hmm. Batista, Randy, and Ric Flair. Evolution right. was a tag team. They went against another great faction with The Shield with Seth Rollins, from Reigns, and Dean Rose, a.k.a. Yep. John Mox. Yep. Yeah, that, that, was, uh, yeah, that was without Ric Flair, by the way, you know. Ric Flair, I guess, so I at this point had re- just about retired, you know, from the whole wrestling business. There, he came out there to say hi to both the Shield and to his boys in Evolution. There, um, still coming life. 
the shield mm-hmm. and I do, I do miss the shield because that that now that faction was a bad man of gem. That was a good faction. Badass. By the That's wardrobe. true. Then. Yeah, no, well. The entrance, that was one badass group, man. Yeah, it was. Yeah. And of course, Very so sadly. Highly entertaining group. Yes. And sadly, unfortunately, you know, uh, Dean Ambrose, now known as John Moxley, is uh, is active in AEW. And we're leaving just Reigns and Rollins to um, do their thing individually there. It kind of fits to say that Seth Rollins has now de- adapted this uh, Joker-like persona with the uh, crazy laugh that he has, you know. In fact, there was a promo for WrestleMania that whereas Rollins was dressed in the um, Joaquin Phoenix Joker with the uh, red suit and everything. All of a sudden, his wife, Becky Lynch, grabs him, you know, talking like Batman. You know, he often talks at times. and I, But she's without the mask. You know, but she's in some sort of a uh, black uh, caped outfit there. They talk about WrestleMania here and there, and um, that's pretty much about it. She's just the man. Mm-hmm, yep. Yeah. And by the way, uh, never mind. I'll wait till the uh, other turn. I'll wait till uh, it's my turn again. I guess it's Ark's turn now. All righty. Mm-hmm. How about the Road Warriors? Oh, my gosh. Yes. Oh man! Well, that was in the middle. Let's not forget they was the World Warriors in the NWA and other wrestling organizations. But in the WWF, WWE, they was known as the Legion of Doom. They decided to call it that. It was that Hawk- song, man. That would stick for me. It would stick with me for the rest of my whole grown up childhood life. I mean, that I will never forget. Hearing Monday Night War, uh, Monday Night uh, War, and mm-hmm. seeing those guys come out, and you just hear, what a rush. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, that, that's never going to get old. That's true. There, now let's. I I remember when they was involved with the NWA, the song Iron Man by Black Sabbath would be their <laughs> music there. And by one time they came in and they disrupted a match between members of the Four Horsemen and a couple other wrestlers there. Yeah, and I guess uh, originally was here brought in by Dusty Rhodes to help take down the Horsemen down. Of course, you know the Hawk and Elmo are no longer with us, and I think Precious Paul is still with us. I think he's the only one from the LOD to be to be around there. Yeah, the original. There were other great guys in the group for a while. Yeah, too. Dra- Dra- There was also Draws, and uh, there was a strange story behind well, uh, how he got in there. Hawk and Animal both passed. They're gone. They're both yeah. passed. I know, yes, exactly. It's really sad. Oh, man. Yeah, because they were like badasses to the core. I mean, like, when I first got a glimpse of them in one of the wrestling magazines uh, as a young teenager, just like, holy cow, wow, dude. How would you like to meet these cats at the dark alley? Not even a lighted one. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Hmm. <clears throat> All right, there. At least in the dark, Ellie, you wouldn't see them. Yeah, either way, you end up with your ass beat no matter what. Absolutely. Yeah, true there. Okay, so it's um. <clears throat> I so it's my turn now, I guess. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, there. Okay, I'm gonna mention this uh, short faction. It was all for women, and one of them was, of course, Charlotte Flair, the daughter of Ric Flair. The oh. four horse women. It was uh, her, Becky Lynch, Bailey, and Sasha Banks. I guess they're involved in uh, the NXT brand for a while there. And um, here's the thing. It's the thing. There was another four horse women involved in the MMA for a while. Ronda yeah. Rousey, Jazeline Duke, Shayna Baszler, and uh, Maria Schiffer. Now... It would have been nice to see um, <clears throat> possibly you know, a Rousey and Charlotte Flair become a unit, but it would be nice to have Tessa Blanchard, the daughter of Tully Blanchard, along for the ride as well, and uh, whoever else to see if uh, maybe the uh, maybe the Andersons, Ole, Jean, Arn, had any daughters who were active in the pro wrestling industry be a part of it as well. But 
chances are we'll probably never see Tessa Blanchard ever again because of her actions in and outside of the ring there. She's been blacklisted for sure, man. Mm. Which is a shame because she is an awfully great talent for what I heard there. But when you're a great talent, you got to also be great working-wise just as well there. And I guess uh, she did some um, upsetting things that uh, got her in that level that she's in now, unfortunately. Right? Okay. Okay, and I guess it's now Prince's turn. I'm going to go with a team, a tag team that to me were on the Indies and they were on Ring of Honor and they were in AEW and they were all over the Indies. I'm going to go with the Briscoe brothers. Unfortunately, Jay Briscoe has passed away, so I'm going to give a moment of silence to that real quick. Yeah, sure there. Yeah, Jerry Briscoe. And what about and Jack Briscoe? Is he still around? Yeah, his brother's still around. He's still in uh. AEW. That's good, there. Because mm-hmm. I remember they were all, I guess he was one of the considered Mr. McMahon's henchmen for a while. They're along with Pat Patterson. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can't believe that he passed away, though. You know? Mm-hmm. No. From a car accident, they said. Wow. Yeah, one of the, the Briscoe boys. We're every legendary tag team, man. Yeah. We're every legendary tag team, man. All right, there. That's true there. Because I guess uh, the new Briscoes that we have now are carrying out the tradition of the original Briscoes, you know, obviously. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, there. So I guess it's now Ark's turn there. All right. I'm going to mention one that you guys may not know very well. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Dungeon of Doom, Kevin Sullivan. Oh, wow. With, along with Jimmy Hart there. They had, I guess, these were the guys that originally had the giant in their faction. The mm-hmm. giant who will later become the Big Shaw and later now become his real name, Paul White. Kamala. Kamala. Oh, yeah. The Ugandan giant. Rest in peace uh, to him. Zodiac. Mm, nice. Cool the name butcher. there. The Butcher being, of course, Brutus Beefcake, the former Brutus Beefcake, I should see there. Ming. Oh, yeah, who used to be Haku in the WWF. Big big Van Vader. Oh, yeah. And their express goal was to destroy Hulkamania. Mm-hmm, yep. <laughs> What's kind of funny is that I remember this. when after Soon after Hulk Hogan joined the NWO and became the bad guy, Kevin Sullivan, uh, during the promo, said that, uh, they were trying all these years to get rid of Hulkamania and failed. And Hulk Hogan destroys it himself within three seconds. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, damn. And I guess the, the thing at that time is that the enemies were watching each other's backs. You know, friends were watching each other's backs because the NWO was striking everybody. Yep. Yep. Including one the one backstage um part where Scott and uh, where Hall and Nash had baseball bats. They were going after Ray Mysterio Jr. as that as he was known at that time. Arn Anderson, he was holding his arm against had been broken. And believe it or not, somebody outside had actually called the police and the cop cars and ambulance are showing up for real there. <laughs> yeah. Wow, wild. All right, there. And I guess it's is it my turn now? Go for it. Go for it. Oh, okay. <clears throat> there was this one short faction I got a member of, but I'm not too sure who the members of it, but I remember it was so they were also supposed to take on um be the um or actually they were the good guys against the four horsemen. It was a faction called Dudes with attitudes. Yeah, what's up? There you are. Up, Shika. Yeah, there you are. What's up, man? Nah, what's up? Uh, I was busy. Uh, I was at the mall uh, getting some clothes, shopping. Mm, okay. Dudes I see you there. Oh. Uh, uh, the right. Prince. 
Fritz! He's here. Fritz! I'm here. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. So, I know you already mentioned it, probably, mm-hmm. I believe, but the NWO, black and white. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. My first, was my first memory of professional wrestling when I was five years old in 1996. Or yeah. so, you know, the original show, Well, really, whenever the, what, what year did they come out? Well, the what well, they started in 1996, and we mentioned that it was right. at the Bash of the Beach pay per view when oh, Hulk Hogan no. came out and turned to the so dark side. So like 96, I mean that's all. That's my first memories of wrestling. I was five or six years old, and uh, and I mean I remember them. Obviously, I remember just. Mm-hmm. Hello. Hello. Why are Hello. you there, bud? Uh, let's see here. With uh, I know something happened with this microphone, but he did mention they all the end of, you know, was probably one of the big factions in the nineteen okay. nineties, and he he just yeah. left again. Dang. I think it's my turn, right? Right. I believe. I think so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I okay. mentioned dudes okay. of that too. So with the late uh, Paul Orndorff. Uh, where, where am I going to go take this? Where am I taking this? Uh. I want to start. Uh, let me see. Another great faction was um. What is? It? I can't think of the name of the group. It's on the tip of my head, but I can't think of the name. Oh, the Steiner Brothers. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Rick and Scott from Michigan. Yeah. Michigan. Hello. Hello. There you are. All right. So, so, um. I, and then I remember, obviously, like the bogus stings coming down, and then the real stings coming down from the Raptors, you know, against NWO. Um, but obviously, the Wolfpack. Um, yeah, so when, I was going to mention that. Sting, that was big. And obviously, at the time, Sting was my favorite wrestler. I mean, I liked the others too, but, you know, I like Sting the best. And when he did the red and black face paint, and that, I thought that was fucking pretty cool. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, Dr. Brown, yes. Red, yeah. red face paint mm. it, at the time. You know what I'm saying? He did the crow yeah. gimmick and everything. Yes. But like that yeah. was pretty damn cool. Like that was, you know what I'm saying? In like, fact, let me also add this. The, the crow's thing was cool altogether. Because yo, know, this gave the new it's just a gimmick that he still does to this very day. That's probably what was his most recognizable because he was this anti-hero that was outcasted by the community. Resting uh, everybody else for <laughs> something he didn't do, and he Beauty came back. He come like that um, like me. What's up? Yeah, that sounds like me. Hmm. So I came I'm the thing of the community. Prince, I, I, see, Prince yeah. don't even Prince don't, Prince don't even know about. I don't want to say no, but he was he, Prince. You weren't even around for the NWO and all that shit. But I'm sure he's seen it and heard of it. And I mean, yeah, but like. Watching it at the time, I mean, it's a whole different. At the time, I thought it was real and stuff, so it's a whole different deal. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, as a kid, you think it's real. Wrestling was real, right there. You know what I'm saying? Thank you, right. Dr. Brown. Uh, yeah. As a kid, you, as uh, Dr. Brown Prince and Arn Norley, as a child, uh, did you think wrestling was real at a point? Well, originally I did when I first started watching it with the See, WWF. So imagine that. See, so imagine that, like. As a child, especially, you know, like heroes, people like heroes and stuff. Yep. Mm-hmm. People look up to peer people's role models, what you see on TV. Yeah. And like, you know, obviously sports, real mm-hmm. sports, you know, is real. But like wrestling is different because they you you become one with a character. You can relate to the characters and you have yes. your favorite characters. And I mean, sports to a degree, too. But like wrestling, they do a lot of the talking and all the promos. And that's. It's a whole different deal. So, like, when you think, I mean, it's it's unexplainable. It's like, you know what I'm saying? Yes. It's just something that's, you know, really unexplainable unless you've seen it yourself at the time. Yeah. Well, and we, when, I was, when I was a young one, uh, yeah, I thought what wrestling was real and, you know, found out it wasn't. But the thing about wrestling back then is I tried very hard to make it seem real 
-hmm. they didn't do like they do nowadays and just kind of like hey we're just playing you know yeah expose the business that he, as they put for it you know i mean if like that, if, if you if you were if they had the attitude they were now but doing what they're doing and the attitude there would you think it was real now knowing that i know i know as uh the sensitive people oh. out there the uh snowflakes oh. have the up in arms over it oh Oh, what? Why are we doing this? Uh, hello, ladies. Hello, ladies. Yeah, yeah, Bro, we have I'll a bit about, about Val Venus. All of, the, all of the music, all of the music, all of the music, mm -hmm. all of the music. That's what he used to do. He used to come out and go, ah, hello, ladies. And yep. then, like, bro, all of the music, every wrestler, every wrestler, Steve, hello. Every wrestler. <laughs> now nobody's talking. Every wrestler's theme music for from the Attitude Era. Let's just talk. I mean, because really, realistically, WCW theme music wasn't on the level. I mean, obviously, like NWO's theme was cool. Yep. You know, Don Dallas Page's theme, which sounded kind of like, it sounded kind of like Nirvana. Yep, right. they did. And um, Chris Jericho's his theme music was similar to Pearl Jam's Even Flow. So it's like it, it was it's few and far between on WCW's music, but WWF Attitude Era theme songs yep. are legendary. Are all the yep. ones I think? I mean, that's one thing you could. I mean, people could say, "Oh, WCW is better than WWF at the time," which the numbers proved it. They were beating WWF. You did every Monday night. But at the music, I mean, you can even throw out, I mean, obviously, like people like The Godfather doesn't have to be the big, big names. Godfather's music, like all Gold Dust. Um, I mean, the vignette videos, like the, on the screen, on the big Titantron. WCW did not have that shit. They didn't have a Titantron. Not originally. I mean, not originally. Later on, they did. Like, they did, I know they had I'm, something like that during the later years. Yeah, the later years, you know what I'm saying? But like, compared yeah, but it was to not big as the Titantron. Hello! Can y'all hear me? Loud and clear. All right, so at WWF, I'm not, I'm, I mean, look, I'm not a WWF fan, but I was first watching WCW first. You know what I'm saying? That's my introduction through WCW, NWO, Sting, all of that. Um, but WWF, like the music, the theme songs, uh, most all of them, pretty. I mean, like the Titan Tron, that was the whole note. That, that was pretty cool. If you could go back and think about it, like obviously other companies copied off that through the years, like AEW now and others. But thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. All right, there. Let's keep them. And also, credit to the guy who composed the theme music for the WWF, Mr. Jim Johnston. Jim Jones, yeah. Yeah, Jim John. What? <laughs> well, Jimmy Hart did some <laughs> too. That's true, dear. Well, he did. Well, remember, that's right. He did uh, added some to the theme music for WCW and the WWF as well. P and Dr. P Brown, P what's your favorite? The... What's your favorite theme song? I mean, what's your favorite? Uh, you know, uh, superstar music. What's your favorite song? It have, uh, have to be Stone Cold Steve Austin's. Really? I mean, breaking the shattering glass and the uh, wrists and the drums was just uh, phenomenal. When you heard that I mean, glass uh, the, shedding, I mean, even in the in the you know obviously at the time, your road dog and uh, Billy Gunn, like the Mister Ass gimmick coming out. Yep, yep. The Mister Ass song and everything, like your funnier stuff. It was it was funny. I mean, they really could do all that stuff now, but just take out like the stuff with the women. Yep. You know what I mean? Like if you think about it, like what the was really match. Yeah, like take out all that, anything with the women that you did in the Attitude Era, don't do, but everything else, do exactly what you did in the Attitude Era, and it would be up to the 8 millions again, or 16 millions, or 12 millions like it used to be. I don't know exactly the number of the ballpark, but right now it's like a million, if that, or something, like AW's 200,000 or something, 200, they split the, you know, like... Uh, 
it's weird, but it's definitely not comparable. Like AEW is not WCW. You can't compare that nope. to how you know it's it's just uh, someone with a lot of money, a lot of money, bought, bought off talent from the main promotion, mm -hmm. and just like the Live Golf, just like the other golf association, mm -hmm. which kind of ruined, kind of ruined ruined golf. It's like no one. It's it's. It's weird how they play it. They just got a TV deal on the CW, right? Before you had to watch it on YouTube and stuff. And like, yep. who watches golf? Old people, like oh, I mean, I you know, here's your younger younger golf fan base, but mostly your older senior citizens or sixty and above watches golf. Actually watches it, and mm -hmm. they're not gonna go on. You know what I mean? Like the internet, YouTube, or if you're into it, like if you're into golf, you want. You know what I mean? It's a thing, but yeah, it. it it, the, what the Live Golf did, they bought off all the big, uh, all these big names that were, you know, in the last ten years playing golf on TV and everything. And at first, they didn't have a TV deal, but I mean, way they're making way more money they would be making on the regular tour. It's crazy, mm, but yeah. they do these pairing ups, like the, these team names. Like it's weird how they play. It's really, they wear shorts. There's like loud music yeah. playing, like. You know, like loud music playing, like everyone getting drunk and drinking. It's kind of different. You not might like a Happy Gilmore. Yeah, but it's people don't want to watch that when you watch golf. It's a different kind of sport. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So I mean, it's kind of like horse racing. You know what I mean? Right, it's or, it's all it's a different soccer. level of sophistication. Well, no, it's a different level. It's just sophistication. Soccer's not sophisticated, but oh. it's like um, <laughs> point I'm trying to make here is what Tony Khan did is doing is ruining wrestling because WWE can't beat them. Their production, the production, like all the vignettes, all the everything, like just how they they're out of their worldwide reach. You know, you can't beat that. Like obviously if you're a wrestling fan, you're gonna watch both products, WCW, AEW, and I'm shitting on AEW. I do watch the product, but it, it's just you could tell it's so it's it's two or three steps behind WCW. Mm -hmm. They go in way smaller venues than, w, than WWE. Mm -hmm. Every now and then they'll do the United Center, you know, CM Punk's thing, and maybe other arenas, maybe like the Forum in LA. I think they did that. Yep. And other small things, but like they do way smaller arenas. Like I'm talking when they go to Houston, they go to. The University of Houston Cougars, uh, the Fertitta Center, which used to be uh, Hawthorne's Pavilion. It's very small. It's a college basketball arena, very small compared to where WWE goes, which is the professional NBA slash NHL arenas. Mm. Multi, multi, like 20,000 plus compared to. Maybe five, maybe five thousand, if that, in these college arenas. And I'm not saying AEW goes to all college. You know what I'm saying? So at the end yeah. of the day, I'm gonna throw out an AEW tag team. All right. If you want to call them a tag team, because right. one, one, one person. I mean, you can technically. I would because, and and it, and it's Sting and Darby Allen. Mm -hmm. Would you call them a tag? Would you consider them a tag team? Pretty much, yes. And when you look at so, it, there's... So, obviously, we know what they're doing by putting Sting with Darby Allen. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, kind of like a father up, and son uh, deal there. No one knew who this guy was or whatever. You know, yeah. like, your extreme wrestling fans, yes. Like, like, do you, like compare it, like, let, let's take Judas Priest, for example. People know the three or four regular songs, right? But people like yep. Ian Brown... Yeah. And Cronin, I mean, he threw out British Steel, you know, reference before, you know, um, yep. maybe a few people that work with Nikki J over there in the music department. But, um, you know, we know that Jesus Priest has tons of bangers, you know what I mean? Yep. Mm -hmm. like, the, like the extreme wrestling fan, they knew about Darby Allen. They knew he's great. But like your casual, semi-casuals like me and Brown and others. We didn't know who this guy was because we don't follow these, you know what I'm saying? Like the indie stuff per se. So 
Darby Allen at first, I was like, you know, maybe like most people, oh, what is he ripping off Sting's thing, blah, 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 blah. But the further they get along, obviously there's some inspiration there. But it was like a younger Sting. It was like a younger modern Sting with the skateboarding thing, hip, surfer Sting, the type gimmick mm -hmm. maybe with the hair, but also mysterious because it's kind of looks like he shots a hot topic. He's kind of goth too. But hey, then, like, sorry to interrupt. I'm going to be uh, going to the grocery store real quick. I don't want uh, you guys to hear all the noise in the background, so I'm going to step out, okay? If that's okay? Okay, guys. But I don't want you to hear all the noise in the background of the grocery store. I don't want, you know, to interrupt the show. <laughs> I'm going to step out. And I hope you get all shot right. in the head. Thank hey. What Dude. the fuck is wrong with you? Damn. I hope they give you a COVID. I hope they give you a COVID shot in the head. COVID. Dude. The head. COVID Dude. Shot. Uh, that Dude. That one. Why are? Why are? Don't fuck with me, buddy. That. Don't fuck with me. Support the, gonna, we support let me the tell you something. We support you the something. vaccine. I'm going to open up Pandora's we box. Fucking I'm going to come after you. you. I'm going to come after you. you. And you're not going to be happy. You're not going to be happy, buddy. You. Nah, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. Go ahead. I know. We know. <laughs> oh, or else it's your boy. Because you know what happens every time. No, they, we no, no Brown. They, I mean, um, uh, Prince, think of some, some 90s stuff. Wrestlers. By your... Shawn Michaels. There you go. Uh, Oh, all right. Let's dive into him. Mm -hmm. I'll be right back. Now, right for back. me, right. for me, WWF wise, I didn't get into until. I mean, obviously, I'll tell you what I remember. I mean, all the classic stuff like Gold Dust. I, I mean, I thought he was pretty cool. Obviously, I remember when Owen Hart passed. Yep. Um, I but I wasn't at the time. I wasn't keen to the his blue blazer gimmick so i probably at that time i think i was just watching wcw but you know i knew the rock i knew i mean the heavy stuff i went to wrestlemania 17 in the astrodome you know what i'm saying so yes that was all attitude era if you go watch that on the peacock it's all attitude era yep. it's like 2001 i think uh um, sounds right yeah and I mean, that's all. I mean, that was all what was great about it. I mean, now compared, like people say, it's the greatest time of wrestling. Now it's bullshit. Yeah. Maybe it's like easier to view stuff and easier to get interactive interaction from wrestlers. And now, yes, because social media. But like back then, like wrestling was better. They were getting way bigger numbers. I don't know how to compare that to like what you see on the computer nowadays. But like, it's way more people into wrestling. Everyone knew who Stone Cold Steve Austin was. I mean. Who in WWE now can you really say? I mean, John Cena. Who doesn't even wrestle anymore? I know. I mean, yeah. everyone knows. I think everyone knows who John Cena is to extend. I don't know if, yep. you know. Um, yeah, actor. Roman, and, uh, right, like Roman Reigns, maybe, but definitely, like, right now, John Cena, for sure. Right. But By everyone way, yes. knows, you know what I'm saying? But hold on yes. a minute. The WWF, Dr. Brown, would you agree with this? What did you like better, WCW or WWF? Well, I kind of like both of my, in a lot of ways because uh, the WCW had the NWO, they had all the other characters. They also had this other faction, which I should mention, Raven's Flock, featured, of course, Goodbye. Raven, Han you know what, Sick Kidman, yeah. you know, Billy Kidman. You know, Wouldn't Perry so they got, part of that? Perry, yes, I believe so, yes. And yeah. later on, Chris Canyon. I remember that. I remember all other. that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I remember all that. Absolutely. And by the way, going back to the Blue Blazer, believe it or not, the Blue ba Blazer was Owen Hart's original gimmick when he joined the WWF. Yeah, real quick, Dr. Brown, Dr. Brown. Let's, yeah. let's, post, let's postpone the drama show for later date gotcha. so I'm not, all right gotcha. I gotta watch all right the game and hockey and basketball tonight i want to catch up on some sports so okay i understand that we will definitely do it sometime but, uh, uh, possibly. Mm -hmm. but brown and and let's just say 1998 was like the greatest time in wrestling yeah both we had the nwo you know yep. what i'm saying both companies yes. were at so at, the, at that time were you watching it every week every monday night well, the thing was, I was at my, I was um I worked at my restaurant until about eleven p.m. Yeah, I was. 
So I wasn't able to check out any episodes of Raw. I have to go to the other programs yeah. to see a witness to highlights. So you never saw that. You never Raw. saw it live. You never watched anything live. At the not time? really. The only no, not really. Unfortunately, uh, but we'll see. But at least how would you live with, in the day of chopping off woods in the woods and stuff? I was working around a job at the restaurant. Yeah. But Did you, were you, were you like chopping off woods and stuff? Like, where were you at the time, bro? At working that time. at my job at the rest at that time I was working the afternoon job. It was Same, you never had you day. never had you never had a Monday off. The only Monday I had off was uh, for my dad's this funeral. Guy. That was about oh, it. Come on. All right, that's enough. All right. And plus, and plus, Jeez, but right. let me let me speak this. They would show highlights of what happened on Monday Night Raw on other wrestling shows that uh, with the WWF and uh, and TNT that broadcast the Monday Night Show would repeat the entire Monday Night Show show at about 1 p.m. Eastern time late at night. So it will mm-hmm. watch about yes. So I was able to catch more on WCW than I did on the WWF there. And uh, let me go like the thing about the Blue Blazer. When the Blue Blazer came back or during the, in the Attitude Era, that was actually a punishment for Owen Hart for refusing this angle. See, Vince Russo had written this angle is saying that uh, he was involved with Jeff Jarrett at the time, and he also had Deborah McMichaels, who was this Deborah at that time. And apparently, you know, Russo came up with an idea where uh, Owen has a high school crush on Deborah, but Owen refused it because his wife Martha would not be very happy with that angle there. So Russo said, okay, we'll try something else there. Vince McMahon, unfortunately, got the wind of it, and as a punishment for um, refusing that angle, he got put back into that blue blazer gimmick. <laughs> See, one of the big rules in the pro wrestling industry is that when you refuse an angle, you get punished in some sort of a oddball way. Yeah, there was somebody that uh, ended up having to wear a dress. Who was no. it? Perry Saturn? No, he had a mop as a girlfriend. Oh, yeah, I think it was. Um, I think it may be Ben Perry Saturn uh, in the dub when he was involved with the WWE at that time there. If I'm correct, I can't remember the guy's name. Mm. Uh, he had for a while a show with Vince Russo on his channel. Mm. I can't remember his name though. Stevie Richards? No. Oh, uh, it was Disco Inferno? No. Um, I know it wasn't. Um, let's see. I'm not sure. It's kind of. Um, I'm trying to remember it myself. It wasn't Ben Hameen either. I can't remember who it was, but he had a show Never he was time. doing. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. He he had a show he was doing with his wife. Uh, what? Did, that oh, matter. big veto, big veto. Yeah. Yes. He, he, was he got with oh, 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 uh, from uh, the Mama Luke's. Yeah, he got punished and had to wear a dress mm-hmm. everywhere. Wow. Even the Mama Luke's. Yeah. And let's not forget he was involved with the Super Ugly show for a while there. They had the big veto brand happening. I used to, DM, I, he used, yep. used to DM each other. He was cool, but like. Uh, I think he and um, he used to work with Vince Russo too. Right. Yeah. Yes. But um, we're gonna have to dive into the two thousands on one of these shows because that was great wrestling too. I'm not gonna lie, mm-hmm. but let's keep the nineties. In nineteen ninety nine. My what next section. Go ahead. Hey. My bad. Yeah. My bad. Next, my... next, uh, next section arc. Okay. It also had my favorite theme song, and that was the Wyatt family. Oh my god! For some goodness. reason, I really love that theme song. Oh, well, oh, hold on a minute. I thought we were just keeping it in. The, I thought we were keeping it in the nineties. It doesn't matter. No, no, it's it's factions. It, period. Uh, yeah, we're discussing factions, whether it's a yesteryear or a currently. All right, I thought we were talking about 90s wrestling. Okay, so. No. And I went back to the 80s on some of mine. Mm. 
the or Wyatt descendants. family. The Wyatt family, obviously, yep. rest in peace to uh, Luke Harper. Uh, Luke Bo- yeah, Bo- uh, Luke Harper. Luke Rohan. Yes. Yeah, his real name and, was. Uh, the writers missed that. Don't, 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 was... don't, dox, don't dox him or nothing, Brown, but, you know. Uh, Luke Bohagen, I think you know. But, um. No, his real name was John Hubbard. Real great. Um. I actually, I mean, what a, looking back at what that was and what it is now, which is they don't have the white family anymore, but, you know, just yeah. obviously the main character, Bray, what everyone thought that was going to be, or maybe what people still think of them, which is this new version or this generation's form of The Undertaker. Mm-hmm. Um, which in a way, you know, not, I mean, with the, with the whole, uh, poo poo fun house thing, the goofy <laughs> bull crap at the time, yeah, the first couple things was funny, but like more of a creepy, like clowny type of yep. scary, you know, yep. but he needs to stick to the, like, if he sticks to the dark thing, the darkness stuff. You suspend your disbelief, you know, like when you watch a movie, you know it's not real, but you don't go in thinking it's not real because you're make, not make-believing. So, Well, there were some uh, good things going on with Wyatt, and the writers kept screwing him up. They did, yeah. 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 You know, what he, what he should have and could have became, like champion for a long time, like, like, like The Undertaker, like that impact, you know. No, that, little, that little spider walk thing he did was creepy as hell. Yeah. That was. You know what? And what we all already got that from the spider walk from the Exorcist, the um the version that was never seen until later on. Dr. Brown. And let's not forget the gimmick he had at that time as that southern cult leader. With the uh, psychotic persona along with it, that was uh, amazing just as well there. How many times have we seen that uh, individual portrayed in all these horror movies? Like Children of the Corn, for example. Yeah. The lead uh, the leader, Isaac. I, I think love Ross. that theme song. Yeah, it was a good song there. Children of the Corn leader, Isaac Rojas. Hmm. Right. Okay, it's my turn now. Now we got to mention this faction here. I think of <clears throat> the corporation featuring mm-hmm. Mitz, Mr. McMahon, the Mr. McMahon character. You know, is McMahon his son Shane? You know, later on they would gather members like uh, Kurt Angle. They would have Ken Shamrock. They have had later, later on, they would also form the corporate ministry with the um, Ministry of Darkness. Combined it to one there for a short while there. I mean, the corporation was about, you know, uh, it's corporate profits. I mean, you got to remember at that time, the word corporation was like another C word around the 1990s, you know? Now, the thing was, you know, Vince McMahon tried to, tried to, he basically tried to restore his image after the Montreal screw job, but nobody was um, buying what he was saying, even in that thing called, you know, Why Brett Why that they did at the end of that one Monday Night Raw after the Montreal screw job had occurred, saying Brett screwed Brett. But people were not buying it. They were booing him left and right. So, Instead of trying to scream about saying, hey, we had to do what we had to do, McMahon decided, you know what, let's run with it. And that's when the Mr. McMahon character was born. And that lead on to the, the, the few between Stone Cold Steve Austin. And you may remember, 
McMahon was trying to order M- Mr. Austin to be like a role model, be like um, everybody else. So you're a wrestler, you're world champion, you must be a role model. Whereas Austin was like, nope, I'd rather be Stone Cold Steve Austin. To, uh, to Mr. McMahon's dismay there. Okay. So both Raw, I mean, both WW, WWF and WCW mm-hmm. at the time when it was over, like when yep. it was the last match, the last pit, whatever it was, when it was yep. over, you wanted more. Both. Yep. You can't say the same for the last 10 years of this wrestling we have now. Yeah. Maybe and a also- few episodes, but every time that show... Monday on Monday nights was off. You wanted more, or you were wondering, yeah, what well, was gonna like it was you. It was like so impactful, just like how the show coming in. Yeah, and let's also not forget going back to the corporation. Eric Bischoff tried to try to be kind of something of that similar mode when he joined uh, the NWO. Yeah. That started the downfall of the NWO. Yep, exactly. Mm-hmm. And, and also may have been the start of the downfall of WCW. I remember, let's all, but I think one of the biggest downfalls was the amount of spending that Bischoff was doing. I mean, there was a reason why he was often referred to as ATM Eric. Yeah. My next faction is one that you may not remember. The York Foundation. Hmm. Hmm. That's a new one. Well, no, 1990. Mm. At any rate, it was Alexandra York who oh. basically managed. She was somebody that basically managed wrestlers and used a computer mm. while she was doing it. The first oh. one she did was Michael Rotunda, which she named Michael Wall Street. Oh, yeah. She every time she managed somebody, she would change their name to something more formal. Mm-hmm. Terry Taylor to Terrence Taylor. Mm. Uh, Ricky Morton to Richard Morton. <laughs> ah. Tommy Rich to Thomas Rich. Yeah, the big boss man to Mr. Hughes. Ah, and yeah. Alexander York was Terry Runnels. Wow, interesting there. Very interesting. Let's not forget, you know, um, Mr. Hughes was involved with, I guess, Teddy Long for a while. He was like a, one of them crooked referees at WCW before he became a um, a manager staple, I guess. Yeah. And, of course, his big thing. Uh, I'm having trouble having this thing come up. But at any rate, uh, he was also the bodyguard for Jim Cornette, the Midnight Express. Mm. Bubba Rogers. Yeah. AKA Big Boss Man, the late Ray Trailer. Right. Absolutely there. And the Midnight Express, of course, was interesting because uh These are because he was so two guys, the flamboyant as heck, able to dive off and uh, do all these acrobatics, you know, and we had this nerdy look like Jim Cornette with carrying a tennis racket with him all the time, cutting all these crazy promos. One time referring J.J. Dillon as the poster boy for um, Alzheimer's disease. Yeah. <laughs> well, there was an angle early in uh I don't remember the Federation, because I, but I did watch it, where Paulie dangerously came in with the original Midnight Express. Dennis which Conley. Was, yeah, well, he started with Condrian Rose and Norvell mm-hmm. Austin. He came in there, and he was going to run Jimmy Cornette and the Midnight Express out, mm-hmm. which was Eaton and, uh, come on. Eaton, what Eaton, it was Bobby Eaton, rest in peace, and Stan Lane. And Lane, the story- that's up, Stan Lane, sweet Stan Lane. And uh, the story was that Dennis Condry, you know, apparently in the storyline was the out of the Midnight Express. And as a revenge, Condry decided to uh, get um, get back at Cornette and the Express by forming his own version there with Paul E. Dangerously, who later become with Paul Heyman, his real name, and later also started ECW. 
yeah. which ran amok throughout the whole 1990s there. Until that had, company's disbanded. And they had a feud with, I think the group's name was the Fantastics. Mm, which they came out to Sharp Dress Man. Mm-hmm. Which, by the way, was also managed by Jim Cordette. And, all, and the third uh, tag team he had was managing was the Dynamic Dudes, just as well there. Yeah. What is going on? I did no clue, dude. Deactivation with the deflector shield. Is someone watching Star Trek or Star Wars? I guess he isn't going to tell us. All right. I think it's fire with Hmm, which one? Can't tell. Yeah, well, it's hard to tell because the sound goes in and out here or there. Yeah. But then again, it's possible. It is a pro that is May the 4th, being Star Wars Day, so that's why. Well, I guess we better close Danny the show. Danny and T, please. All right, Danny and T. What up? Danny and T? What? Yeah. Are you adding Danny and T to the program there, Wire? Get them an iced tea. Get some iced tea, baby. Mm. Keep a little optimism, Brown. Come on, man. We are. Is Keep Danny MT on the call with you? Keep that optimism, Dr. Brown. I always do, man. I always Thank do. Mm-hmm. Always. Force be with you. Yeah, you too, man. <laughs> By the way, why are speaking of uh, speaking of Star Wars? Uh, who is your which villain you could relate to more than you do the hero? I uploaded a video earlier on with that subject in mind. Why Don Jin? He was never a hero. Well, I mean, he me. was. Wait a minute, he was never a villain. I meant to say, my bad, my bad, everybody. Oh, uh, Darth Vader. Oh yeah, obviously another one of my favorites as well. There, there's something about him that would treat the hell out of me. No doubt about that. Later years later, we find out why. Obviously, there. All right, there. I guess uh, this. Uh, uh, what up? Da. Hello. Hello. Doctor Brown and Anola, yeah. And why our music show and wrestling show on them and the Patreon. Arnolia's Patreon. Yes, definitely. Uh, Go to our Arknoia's Patreon on patreon.com slash Arknoia. Get a lot of episodes where Arky here discuss music, movies, TV, wrestling, <laughs> sports, and everything else there. Definitely sign up for that, everybody out there listening. Right. So I we guess... Like uh, Go ahead. Yeah, I, so you said, Ark, that this concludes our wrestling show for the evening there? Yeah, I think so. I believe so there. So what are we going to do next week there um, for our show there on Thursdays? Um, the hmm. luchadors. Luchadors, oh yeah. The ones who wear the masks. And we also want to talk about... Not I want to necessarily. Bring up, not necessarily. Okay, there. Eddie Guerrero. Eddie Guerrero. All the Latin... The Latin uh, Tell you what, let's do a tribute to the Latino wrestlers out there, whether it's Tito Santana, Eddie Guerrero, Chavo Guerrero Sr. How about the how about that? Okay. Sounds good to me there. Definitely. And we definitely got to bring in the LWO for Shizzle. And then uh Wednesday night we're continuing the nineties and maybe we'll get to the top one hundred of nineteen ninety one. Okay, there definitely because we didn't get a chance to do that. Uh, the, That's kind of last... depressing, but hey, what the heck, you know. But then again, we had a lot of good conversations on how different the 1990s was from the uh, part from the 80s and 70s there, how everything just right. switched around, and how it influenced the people today. Right. 
All right, there. So, um, <clears throat> Duffy for YR, Prince Idol, Ark Noe, and myself. Hey, guys, everybody here, enjoy the rest of your uh, Thursday evening there. All right, and we'll see you next week, guys and gals. Mm, Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Been on Tyler now. Pen a bang, pen a bang, Dr. Brown. I'm going to record this whole episode go. because the stream went down in the middle of the show there. So I'm going to definitely um, did it record the whole thing. Right? Yes, it did. Yes. I don't yeah. know why it did. But I'll talk to you guys later, okay? Wait, are you leaving? Yeah, I got to. Um, Get uh, to get ready for uh, some stuff there. Plus, I got work tomorrow morning, as always. Yeah, okay. well, on the um, Metallica, on the, um, the James Hetfield picking technique. Yeah. I don't think he does. He he does it like that. He, he was using it more of the uh, like try it like that way, and it'll work better. I know he does. Uh, Kirk, Hamm- Kirk Hammett does kind of more of the style. Oh, YouTube you short deal is to explain how it's done there. That's how he did. Well, that's how he showed it in, in a YouTube short that I saw. But he was doing like the da 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 like he wasn't doing like the the hard chugging downs. Yeah, like the with the three the three fingers, he was doing the mostly the down picking on a couple of song on a song that's there. What I'm saying. So you should try the down. You should try down picking. All right, there. I'll try it at my best there. I'll give it a work there. In the meantime, I'll see you later, man. All right. Thank you. All right. Bye bye. Thank you. Mm-hmm.